Now we'll draw a cube uh, with three J's, right? So, so we'll see same uh, from the same customary things that you were doing from last uh, thing, right? So you have a scene, uh, but but now you have a new geometry that comes out of the box. Instead of using a shape, you have a geometry. So so you remember we we took a shape and we attached it to a geometry, right? Three J's has APS that you can directly use those geometries. It has box geometry, it has sphere geometry, it has cube, cuboid, and all all the possible shapes that you can imagine. Three D. Three J's already has them inbuilt. You don't have to do that work of creating that shape and then mapping to it. Three J's will give you that out of the box, right? And we uh, right now we we using the box geometry that comes in uh, from Three J's, right? And again, uh, we need to attach. We need to have a particular material uh, attached to it, right? And uh, so uh, in, in our case, the mesh is basically, again, it's just going to be a cube mesh and it has the, the two properties that it will take, right? The two arguments are geometry and material, right? Uh, the one important thing that you see, keep see here is scene dot add keeps uh, creating, right? Uh, so going back to that particular question of uh, what is a scene? So think of this uh, as a scene. Uh, a scene is basically just a scene graph, right? A scene graph is just think of uh, how you would, uh, you can um, actually, I come back to that late in, in the later part of the thing, but since there was already a question that is asked, uh, like you have DOM, like you like you have uh, your DOM that, that has all of the, uh, Objects, it's basically just a tree of objects, right? Uh, similar to that, you have uh, you create a scene graph. It's basically just a tree of uh, a tree of items in that particular three D scene, right? Um, and and it's called as a scene graph. And the the, the scene graph will have all of the uh, the items that we mentioned, uh, like the, the the mesh, the material, the camera, uh, uh, the lights, and everything. It, it is what will compose that particular scene graph. And the scene graph take uh, the, so the, your entire scene graph gets it gets uh, put inside that particular one object that you called scene, that is called scene, and that's what goes to your canvas and that finally renders on the HTML five canvas that you see, right? I think that probably answers your question better than what I said earlier, but yeah, so, so think of it as just a tree of items in a 3D scene, right? So that's what a, a, a scene graph has, right? So now we are adding the cube mesh to the scene, uh, unless and until it, we have attached it to and attached it to the canvas, it does not get rendered. At this point, there's not no rendering that's happening. We've all doing all of this imperatively, right? As I mentioned, there's one step uh, next to the other step, and there is no sort of there's no functional behavior, right? There's no declarative way of doing this right now, right? And that is probably something that you should you should think about right now, right? Uh, why are we having to write all of this uh, imperatively? Same camera uh, and same renderer, right? So we have set up a renderer. Uh, we have uh, appended it uh, to the uh, DOM element. Uh, we set a size. Uh, we set a pixel ratio because uh, basically, if you zoom in and zoom out, uh, it should still look crisp, right? If we don't set a pixel ratio, what happens is uh, if you zoom in and zoom out, it will look pixelated because it does not know uh, 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 the pixel ratio of a particular device. You can probably Google what pixel ratio means. I, I can. Uh, you can that that will explain it to you better. Cool. And we finally have to render the scene, right? Let's just render the scene. I, I'm, I'm doing this inside a function for a very specific use case, but you can just call a render or render dot render uh, with, with takes in two uh, parameters, which is the scene and the camera, right? Now we have a cube, right? Uh, a cube, the, the, the material that we attach to it has this uh, sort of the, the mesh normal material has this different color associated with each uh, side, each face of the cube. Uh, that is the property of that particular material. And that's why you see different colors. Uh, we did not do any specific uh, thing to, to have it this particular way. Uh, this is again, what comes out of the box inside 3GS. Uh, and this is, a, this is what they call as a normal material, right? And you have a double side so that if you if you point your camera on the other side, you still uh, view uh, the same uh, exact same uh, how you actually want to want to view it, right? And that's why you have the uh, property called side. Uh, why you have it called as a double sided material, right? Cool. Now that we have done that, right? Let's rotate the cube, right? So, so what is this magic that we are doing here? So if you see if you saw that render function that's right over here, right? We're doing something important here. So you have a request animation frame that we was not there before and we are doing something with the mesh and then we are finally rendering these two uh, lines of code were not there right so request animation frame if you can think about it uh, if you already know uh, about it that would uh, just for people who don't know about it right like so request animation frame is sort of a callback that uh, that uh, that that is uh, in, in the browser that where you uh, uh, it, it runs before the browser paint. So what that means is basically if you want to um, have a, a smooth 60 FPS uh, uh, animation of of any sort, right? It, you're supposed to do it inside the callback of a request animation frame, right? So so in the in, in the browser event loop, when it, when all that uh, jazz happens, right? Like if, if 
uh, uh, I'm probably over complicated, but to, to just think of uh, it very simply, if you need, you need to have, if you need a, a smooth 60 FPS animation, you need to call uh, put it inside a request animation frame callback, right? And we are calling the request animation frame again. We are calling the render function again over here because we need it to be an infinite uh, uh, rotation, right? If you call it only once, it's going to do it once and then stop, right? We need this function to, we need this cube to continuously rotate. And that's why this uh, callback is being called infinitely. We are, we are basically calling the same render function again and again and again. And, and the, we are basically saying uh, the rotation dot Y, we are just moving it slightly in the Y axis. So uh, this is the cube and it's rotating in the Y axis by a very small amount. So you know, you see a very small rotation, right? If you want to obviously make it faster, you can, you can make it spin faster by just incrementing that value, right? So we have a very nice looking cube that that's the same, but it, it doesn't have to be just a cube, right? You can, uh, let's say we want to have uh, a cube that has rounded corners, for example. How do we do that? Is again, we, we go back to using a different geometry. Instead of uh, having the three box geometry, we use a rounded box geometry. And you have a nice looking uh, rounded box that's similar to the one that you saw earlier, right? Cool. The, but, but the biggest question right now is, uh, we, we wrote all of that imperative code, but can we write it declarative, right? Uh, what is the best way that to write a dictionary? And it's obviously React, right? Like, so that's, that's the thing that we know of, and we would obviously be using React. And it says in the title, so we'd be using to React, uh, use, uh, we'll be using React to uh, uh, write all this 3JS code declarative, right? It's built by this, uh, uh, and, and with React, there is this particular uh, library called React 3 Fiber uh, that helps you compose your 3D scene declaratively. Right, and uh, it with the, with reusable and self-contained components that also react to state. Like uh, if you know state and props and react, right? Like so, so they also react to your state, and uh, they are also very re readily interactive because of the uh, and that, that's what React Three Fiber enables you to do. Uh, it also allows you to tap into the React's entire React ecosystem uh, without any additional overhead. Also, right, and the reason why React Three Fiber is incredibly powerful is it sort of combines two important things, which is it takes in uh, uh, React's uh, uh, scheduling capabilities, right? It takes in uh, the the uh, beautiful abstraction and the uh, huge heavy lifting that 3JS do does and puts them together. And that's what React 3 Fiber enables you to do, to write declarative 3D apps, right? Um, and you can also have, uh, just by uh, the nature of it being uh, functional and declarative, you obviously have, uh, you can write more testable and maintainable code. And obviously there are a ton of tools that you can use by the Poimandras ecosystem. Poimandras, uh, to explain Poimandras is sort of a collective of engineers. They do some really good work. They have a ton of open source libraries. Uh, you've probably heard about Zustand. If you've probably heard about React Spring, uh, they're all uh, from the Poimandras ecosystem. You should probably go check them um, on Google. Um, and they have uh, uh, incredibly well-maintained libraries that are always of the best standard that I have seen, right? And they do all of this work uh, in, in the open. Um, and that's just one of the best things that I've seen um, that they do, right? 